Hey guys, it's Max, and we're back with Battle Code 2016. In this episode, I'm going to make it so that our robots can more intelligently path around obstacles, including other allied robots. To demonstrate this uh, problem that we've got with our lecture player, I've set up the direction as northeast and southwest on the map Get to Work. And I'll just step it forward using this button here at the top, and you can see that our red team in the bottom gets totally stuck on these simple obstacles, and nothing happens for the whole game. These guys are only considering the option of moving forward, and as you can see on the client display at the top, when I mouse over this tile, the rubble is 200. Anytime the rubble is greater than 100, the robot cannot move through that tile. One option is to just dig through the rubble and then we wouldn't have to write any pathing code at all. But for an obstacle that's this simple, it's really easy to just walk around it. And that's what we're going to do today. The basic idea is that we're going to check directions that are slightly to the left and right of the direction that we want to move and see if those are available. The actual implementation is going to seem a little weird at first. First I'll make an, a list of integers representing those directions to the left and right. This is bad naming convention because I called the name directions even though it is an integer array. The first direction is zero, meaning straight ahead. The second direction to try, one, is a slight rotation to the right by 45 degrees. And I'll just fill in the rest of the possible directions, including going in reverse. And that is a declaration of a new integer array. I do that at the top because it's not going to change. It's going to remain the same for the whole game, so I don't want to execute that code too many times. Here's where we were moving, and we were only trying the direction ahead. Let's change this to accommodate other directions. I'll call this forward-ish. You're not always going forward. You're going forward-ish. I'll make a new method, and I'll call the direction that we're moving ahead, because we're not always moving ahead. It's like we're facing ahead and we're rotating our body and moving in some direction but still facing the other way, like a tank or something. Then we're going to look at several candidate directions. And the candidates are based on these integers that we had in the possible directions. So we'll define a candidate direction as direction.values, that's an array containing all eight directions that are possible in the game, and then we'll take a certain index of it. The index we're going to take is ahead.ordinal plus i plus 8, put parentheses around that and take modulo 8, or divide by 8 and take remainder. Okay, that doesn't make any sense at the moment, but I'm going to explain it in a minute. Okay, and now before we had if RC can move in moving direction, we're going to just change that to candidate direction. If you can actually move in the candidate direction, we want you to leave this loop because you're done looking for places to move. We do that with the break word. Over here it says there's an unhandled exception, so we'll just add a throws declaration. Okay, I'm going to save this and I'm going to push run, and then we're going to look at an image explaining what's going on. So in this image, I've just truncated the amount of code visible. So we're only looking at the list of possible directions up here, and we're looking at this method called forwardish. I've also got an image here on the right showing our location and an example of some obstacles. So there's an obstacle that's dead ahead at the northeast, and there's an obstacle at north. And we're going to see what our robot's going to do. We're just going to step through the code manually 
and we're going to see what happens. So this loop happens again and again for each i, one at a time. So let's paste this. Let's say this is taking place again. And what really matters is ahead.ordinal. So ahead is northeast. And dot ordinal turns that from a name into a number. So it becomes 1. OK, plus i. Well, this is the first iteration of the loop. So i starts out as 0. Remember, the first item in our list, possible directions, is 0. So 1 plus 0 plus 8 modulo 8. And that equals 1 because we had 9 divided by 8, and the remainder is 1. So the first direction we're looking for is direction.values at position 1, and that's northeast. All that work just to go from northeast to northeast, well, it's going to make sense later. So we're checking northeast, and well, it's not going to work. So we go to the next iteration of the loop, and this code executes again, only now, Instead of i being 0, it's the next item in the list. So it's 1. And if we take 1 plus 1 plus 8, divided by 8, take the remainder, that's 2. And sure enough, 2 is available. So now we can just move to the east, and we'll just exit the loop. See, this break will take place, and it'll stop right there. If it had gone on, of course, the next item would have been minus 1, and we would have ended up at 0, and we'd be looking in direction north. Just like that. OK, let's see if this player can more accurately path around the map. Let's get to work. So we're going to watch these players in the bottom corner. We're going to see if they can get around those simple obstacles. And yes, they got around. Ah, oh, that's fantastic. But now they get stuck in these pockets. We're going to fix the pocket problem in the next episode. See you then.